Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call, particularly those of you that are calling in for the first time and those that will be listening to the replay over the next 24 to 48 hours. We like to move quickly through these calls, bottom line the information for you. We know you're busy people, you have other things to do. We have a standard format. We spend a few minutes talking about the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar, which we continue to believe is the base currency for the potential reset of these other currencies. A few minutes talking about the program we've put in place to assist you, uh, and then we go to a brief Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about the situation in Iraq. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of the dinar and these other currencies. We're not advocating either the sale or purchase of these currencies, but as rather substantial currency holders ourselves, we're sharing with you the information that we believe is relevant. The most relevant piece of information for those of us uh, holding these currencies, and particularly the dinar, is a window for the reinstitution of the dinar in country. The situation in Iraq continues to be very fluid, but we still remain at this point in time cautiously optimistic that we're looking at a reinstitution in the next 30 to 45 days. I know a lot of individuals experienced or excuse me, expected the reinstitution to happen a little sooner than that. But there are some issues uh, that have to be dealt with in Iraq. First, we are still awaiting the passage of the 2020 budget and resolution of the payment of the back salaries to government employees. At present, Iraq's budget deficit is approximately $38 billion. They're nearly two months behind with payments of their salaries and that's close to about $3 billion. In addition, the uh, options for funding these salaries is uh, running out for the new government. The United States, Germany, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait have all refused to provide additional loans to cover the salaries of the government employees, primarily because of their disgust over the continued government corruption. In addition, it seems that they did begin uh, with the currency op options again, and there has been some indication that uh, some of the provisional currency is again being smuggled out by some of these corrupt officials. So the new uh, Kazemi government really has their hands full at the present time, and they have started to make some changes in policy and announce some upcoming policy decisions. First, they plan to present the 2020 budget to the Parliament by July 1st. Now, July 1st is a kind of an important date. July 1st is the date that the new tariff law was supposed to go into effect. And the argument was that the tariff law is basically toothless until they reinstitute their currency. Therefore, Reinstatement had to occur on or before July 1st. The problem, of course, is that when the government of Iraq, and we have a long history of this, gives a deadline for a, an event to occur, we know more often than not that that deadline simply isn't met. So what's on the front burner right now is passage of the 2020 budget. In addition, the government of Kazemi wants to replace the governor of the CBI designate al Alaq with Shabibi, al-Shabibi. Those of you that have had currencies for a long time know that al-Shabibi was probably the best governor of the CBI that they had since the removal of Saddam Hussein. Shabibi was on the verge of reinstituting the currency all the way back in 2012. And that's when a lot of individuals just prior to that got involved with possession of the dinar. But that was scuttled by two individuals. One was Maliki in country, but the second was President Obama. Although it wasn't obvious in 
2012, it became obvious that Obama was a strong supporter of Iran. He knew that Iran was funding a lot of their terrorist activities through the bilking of funds from Iraq. And uh, he was not pro-Saudi at all. And, of course, the Saudis and the Iranians were the ones that were fighting over hegemony in the Middle East. So for those two individuals, the um, reinstatement of the dinar in 2012 was not going to be a good outcome. And that's unfortunate for just about everyone. The government has also <clears throat> announced that they plan to honor the protesters' demand that the government files on corruption finally be open and made public. <clears throat> uh, a leak, excuse me, uh, the finance minister, Alawi, has also announced that they plan on implementing all of the new reform packages for both the financial and bank sectors. So things are happening, things are moving in the right direction. Now, with regard to funding the salaries for the government employees, the loans seem, the short-term loans are not going to work. The devaluation the of their currency and reissuing some of the provisional currency has certainly been shot down. So the last option and the one that they're going to utilize are going to be short-term internal loans from the CBI utilizing their reserves. Now, there are no good options, but of the options available, this seems to be the best option, and this looks as though this is the way it's going to go. Uh, so uh, one other issue is that Alawi, who again is the finance minister, announced that they will be stopping the currency auctions. They just not haven't given a date for that. So it looks as though they're going to allow a few more of these currency auctions to trickle out and they're going to be dipping into the CBI reserves to take care of the salaries for the government employees. That should plug that hole. It also looks as though the 2020 budget will be presented to the Parliament by July 1st. We're going to plug that hole. It also looks as though the price of oil is slowly rising, which allows the 2020 budget deficit to be closed as the price of a barrel, and therefore the revenues generated to the Treasury uh, of Iraq increases as well. So for all of these reasons, again, I'm cautiously optimistic for a reinstitution of the dinar in the next 30 to 45 days. That takes us from mid-July to August 1st. I would love to have seen it earlier in the quarter, but uh, we want to see this happen, and whatever uh, accommodations we have to make with regard to taxes and uh, whether the rate comes out at a float or returns at, uh, north of $3, we'll have to see. Now, this being the case, there is running out of time for those of you that have not gotten your affairs in order or may not understand what that involves. Most denarians are not wealthy individuals. They're hardworking Americans who, for the very first time in their life, are going to have to deal with the management of a rather large sum of wealth. To that end, Trust Unlimited has put a program in place to assist you. It's a two-phased program. Phase one is pre-RV. Phase two is post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a package of pre-RV asset protection trusts with the assignment of your dinar and other currencies on paper to that trust package. Phase two or post-RV involves all of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of the dinar and hopefully in the not too distant future some of these other currencies. So let's start with phase one, which is, again, the establishment of a package of pre-RV asset protection trusts with the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust package. There is a reason why we have designed a package of irrevocable trusts to, to provide the protection you're going to need. Basically, a package of irrevocable trusts is the best asset protection available domestically. 
Now, there are other assets that can provide some level of asset protection, and some individuals have established them with the mistaken notion that, that they will provide the asset protection and they're going to need and want. For example, some individuals have established LLCs and sub-S corporations. They do provide some level of asset protection, primarily by dividing business assets from personal assets. However, the problem here is that these currencies are a personal asset. In addition, courts have ruled that LLCs and sub-S corporations that are owned in the majority by a single individual or closely held group can be pierced for civil litigation. So the LLC and the sub-S corporation are not going to be appropriate vehicles to provide the asset protection you're going to need and want. <clears throat> Some individuals have established a living or revocable or loving trusts. These trusts can exempt your estate from the cost and delay of probate and in some cases substantially reduce and even eliminate the federal estate tax. But the living or loving or revocable trusts can provide no privacy or asset protection. So they're going to be inappropriate for your needs. Some individuals have established single irrevocable trusts, and they will provide the highest level of asset protection. However, even with the single irrevocable trust, there is an inherent flaw. If any asset within that trust is involved in civil litigation, that would necessarily drag all of your other assets and net worth into that litigation because all of those assets are housed within that single entity, that one irrevocable trust. The solution is to establish a package of irrevocable trusts and I'm going to explain to you two things, how such a package will protect you both pre- and post-RV, and why the package must be established prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. So by establishing our package of irrevocable trusts, a lot of benefits will immediately accrue to you. First, you will enjoy lifetime privacy and anonymity, because assets within our trust package are sealed, meaning that the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. Second, by establishing this pre-RV trust package, you will be able to successfully avoid personal IRS scrutiny. If you are holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, the IRS computers will probably spit out an audit. And with the potential magnitude of this revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown six-year audit. Such an audit would be time-consuming. It would certainly be frustrating because it's come along at the precise time these currencies have revalued, and there are many other much more important things you'd rather be involved in. And third, the cost of a six-year audit would probably be more than the cost of our asset protection trust package. On the other hand, if your pre-RV trust package is in force and you have assigned your currencies to that trust package, you will have successfully transferred the taxable event of this revaluation from yourself personally to the trust. Now this is important for two reasons. First, there's less than a 10% chance of an IRS audit if this taxable event were to occur within a rather sophisticated trust package such as ours. But second and most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit your trust, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because included in it is a special gift subtrust that we've designed for those of you that wish to gift currencies to family and friends. Philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax preferred basis, either pre or post RV. But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, you're going to need to gift currencies prior to the revaluation. 
Now, if you're gifting currencies to individuals that you have no problem giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the lump sum after you have negotiated the exchange, that can be accomplished outside of a trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post-RV lump sum, you can gift to them through the specially designed gift subtrust that's part of our package. And because you're gifting through this subtrust, their U.S. dollars and their privacy will be protected along with yours. The language of this subtrust allows you to gift up to a certain amount of a currency or currencies, meaning you can gift to these individuals the exact U.S. dollar amount that you had in mind, irrespective of the exchange rate. And again, because you're gifting through this gift subtrust, you will have complete control of those post-RV proceeds, meaning you can manage, invest, and distribute this money to these individuals you should deem appropriate. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs in a state of $25 million. Now this estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process, meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much they each stand to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases, even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. Then there's something called the federal estate tax. This is the tax that the federal government would assess in order for that estate to be transferred to heirs. Under current law, approximately 10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax but the balance could be taxed as much as 55%. Now, this scenario is not only unacceptable, it's completely and totally avoidable. How? Scenario number two, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, you assign those currencies on paper to our asset protection trust package. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs that very same estate of $25 million, but this time protected in our asset protection trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero, saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this pre-RV asset protection trust package is for some very specific asset protection benefits, one pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package will allow you to circumvent something called the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. Now, what does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you actually own in direct title or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our trust package. So let's take the previous example from before. You purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. You transfer them to our trust. They subsequently revalue for $25 million. 
you begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth. And a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a couple of problems. First, he or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust package is structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. But second and most importantly, once any prospective plaintiff learns that pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, the only thing they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000, the value of the currencies at the time you transferred them out of title and to the trust, and none of the post-RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post-RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This protects you from future bad acts after you have acquired this wealth. This protection is accomplished through a legal strategy called segregation of assets. This is why we have established a package of irrevocable trusts, and this is how it would work. Again, let's use the same example. You purchased $5 million dinar for $5,000, transferred them to our trust. They subsequently revalued for $25 million. And now that you have $25 million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write-off and additional cash flow, a couple of cars, a boat, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, you place each of them in their own separate subtrust to be managed by the master trust, the trust that you established pre-RV to hold your assigned currencies. Now, how does this protect you from an asset protection standpoint? Well, let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars, you have an accident, the accident is clearly your fault, and tragically someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victim is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your subtrusts of which you are merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with the victim's family. You will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car, making you whole. But this is the important part. All of your other assets and net worth are safely protected in the other sub-trusts. Why? Because the other sub-trusts are separate legal entities or persons, and those separate legal entities or persons had no involvement in the car accident in question, and so the plaintiffs would have no standing to pursue those separate legal entities or persons. So your trust package works very much the way a commercial barge would work, where all of the valuable cargo is stored in a series of small compartments. Why? In the event that any compartment is ever breached, the only potential loss would be the cargo in that one compartment. The cargo in the other compartments is safe and secure due to the firewalls, and the barge will never sink. Now, these benefits are lost to you if you do not establish your package of irrevocable trusts prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, the holder of one of our pre-RV asset protection trust packages, then you will be eligible to participate in Phase 2, all of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies.
I will just make mention of one here today. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trusts Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trust packages post-RV. In addition, many of our clients have already expressed a desire to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is with the direct transfer of funds from your asset protection trust to those newly formed entities. We'll also have our tax specialists there as well. Again, most of you will be acquiring a substantial amount of wealth for the first time in your lives, and you'll want to be informed about all of the more sophisticated tax strategies that you can utilize to legally reduce your tax liability. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. You're going to want to reposition assets after the revaluation for a number of reasons. And we're very concerned that our clients do not lose all of this wealth by making some simple mistakes after years of patiently waiting for the revaluation of these currencies. We know that 95% of all windfalls, however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole initially through the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first by the confiscation of funds at the accounts at those banks. So this is another reason to get money out of the banks and at work in other uh, markets. In addition, the general global shift from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-backed currencies in and of itself is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, and you're going to want a substantial amount of your net worth and tangible assets in order to avoid that volatility. Now, our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned currencies pre-RV, your financial assets like bank accounts and investment accounts post-RV, and is authorized to manage the other sub-trusts, one optional gift sub-trust, which can at any time be converted to a standard sub-trust, and eight additional standard sub-trust to hold physical assets like homes, cars, boats, etc. Now, this was the simplification of a rather sophisticated trust package that we've utilized in the past for our more affluent clients, a package that had an initial cost of anywhere from six to $10,000. But about a decade ago, when we decided to work with denarians, we knew that that price tag was going to be unaffordable for many. So by basically restructuring and simplifying this trust package, we've been able to reduce the cost to $3,000. Now, there are several ways you can pay for that. If you pay us up front, we'll discount the price further to $2,500, saving you an additional $500. If that's not possible, we do have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525, which sum basically offsets our out-of-pocket costs just to produce and deliver your trust to you. The balance of the $3,000 would then be paid in $100 monthly installments. We will charge no interest. The only proviso is once the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar occurs, any unpaid balance would need to be paid within 30 days. So with this approach, anyone that has currencies and understands the need for getting their, affair in or, their affairs in order and their trust in place pre-RV should be in a position to afford to do so. One other suggestion, we do accept credit cards pay us up front with a credit card, not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payment on your card would be substantially less than the 500, excuse me, the 100 a month you would pay under our deferred payment arrangement. But we will work with you in whatever method works best for you. 
Our objective is to help you get your affairs in order and your trust in place for all of the reasons that I've stated here. Now, I will be going to the Q&A in just a moment. But before I do, and again, for the benefit of our newer callers, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and why you may want to seriously consider contacting us to get our initial no-obligation package. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've worked in these areas for over 38 years, and I, along with my clients, were personally involved in the reinstatement of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years' experience working precisely in this area, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Now, Bob and I have been working together for about a decade in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning, and it has been disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of their assets and their affairs. But in point of fact, it's just the reverse. Under our system of civil procedure, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them or lose them outright. And it's at precisely those times in life that you need and want control. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family, things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes, then there are investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth in the aggregate, courtesy of the information age, is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So the only way that you can manage, protect, and control everything is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. And we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives as we understand them. So again, I'd like to thank you for listening to the call. I'm about to go to the Q&A. I suggest our newer callers have a pen and paper handy. I will be giving you our contact information. Again, I strongly suggest you contact us to get our initial no obligation package. It has a lot of information about us, about trusts, about the revaluation. And should you decide to proceed with the establishment of your pre-RV asset protection trust, everything you need is included in the package. But again, that's entirely your decision. Review everything in the package. Contact us by phone or email if you have any questions. We'll be happy to assist you, and there will be no consultation fee. So I'm going to open the Q&A here. Two quick rules on the Q&A. First, we take no service calls on the Q&A. We reserve the Q&A for individuals interested in learning a little bit more about Trusts Unlimited. And second, for obvious reasons, in order to participate in the Q&A, your name and number must be on the screen. So I'm going to open up now. And while I'm waiting for any potential questions, I'd like to give you our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S, unlimited, LLC.com. Our email address is trusts with an S, unlimited, LLC at gmail.com. Our phone service is 307-274-4100. If you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback, or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services, 
you can either go to YouTube and then go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can go to IQD calls and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last number. Rather than dialing a 4, you'll dial a 3 and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you can go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. You should be in our email list within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out very periodically, pre-RV, but once the reinstitution of the dinar occurs in country, valuable information and emails will probably be going out on a weekly basis. So let's go to the Q&A. Our first caller is area code 801. That's 801. Go ahead. Jim, good morning. It's Clay Blackwell. How are you, sir? Yes, sir. Thanks for your call. How can I help you? Well, the reason, I'm, the reason I was calling in is that was exciting news you delivered regarding Dr. Shabibi. Yeah. That's a game changer. Is, is he willing to accept the position? And Has he been in Iraq this entire time? Because Maliki chased him out of the country. Yes. My understanding is that all of the, the uh, bogus charges brought against him have been officially dropped. I don't know if he's back in the country, but Kasemi, uh, the prime minister, has said he wants to bring Shabibi back in. Uh, I don't know if that's going to occur, but even if it doesn't, what it basically signals is, is they're serious about the CBI uh, completing their work and uh, reinstituting the currency, hopefully in the next 30 to 45 days. Okay, so you haven't heard any any information regarding whether Shabibi has accepted the offer to come back? No, no. I, okay. I only know that, that, that they have uh, – well, let me put it to you this way. You know how government works – for them to make a public announcement that that's what they want, it's highly unlikely that they said that if they haven't already talked to him and he's at least expressed the possibility of coming back. So let's, let's hope that's okay. the case. Yeah, that was great news. Thank you. That's all I had. Yes, sir. Thanks for, thanks for your call. Well, Clay uh, was uh, our only caller for this afternoon. That's a little unusual, but that's, that's fine. Uh, it's important that we get this information out on a weekly basis because we have a lot of people contacting us. We're uh, at our top. We are getting close to 100 uh, contacts a day, so we've really had our hands full. By the way, that reminds me, uh, there are about a dozen or so individuals that have called this week that I have not yet gotten back to. I'm going to be on the phone nonstop. I will be going away this weekend, but I'm not leaving uh, Friday afternoon until I return all of those calls, so we will be getting back in touch with you. Again, thanks for listening to the call. Uh, of course, our next call is scheduled for next Wednesday. Certainly, if something of a dramatic nature were to happen between now and then, we'll try to get out an emergency email and schedule an emergency conference call. But failing that, we will be back next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for listening, and have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.